Hi, welcome to Recap Corner. Today I'm gonna explain a movie named Abduction. Nathan Harper is an 18-year-old high school senior, living in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with his parents, Kevin and Mara. He has troubles from recurring nightmares and has been seeing psychiatrist Dr. Geraldine Bennett to treat him. Nathan is teamed with Karen Murphy for a school research project on missing children. They come across a website that predicts how people who are still missing will look like now. He discovers he looks very much like an age progression photo of a missing child, Stephen Price. His investigations show that he and his parents are probably biologically unrelated. He approaches his mother and she confirms the truth. Two men, claiming to be from the Bridgewater Juvenile Justice Department, arrive at Nathan's home while Mara has finished confirming to Nathan that his suspicions are true. Mara is suspicious and attacks the two but is shot and killed by the intruders. Kevin is also killed but not before shouting for Nathan to run. Nathan runs but returns for Karen. Who is captured? Nathan rescues her and attempts to find out who the man is but is forced out of the house because of an explosion. The blast injures Karen, so Nathan takes her to the hospital and attempts to contact the police. His call is intercepted by CIA operative Frank Burton, who tells Nathan he is in danger and he will send two men to collect him. But, suddenly that psychiatrist from whom Nathan used to take counseling, appears. She comes by hiding behind balloons and helps him and Karen escape. This psychiatrist was a CIA officer too. She gives them the address of a safe house and asks him to go there. As they will be safe there. Burton explains that Nathan's biological father, Martin Price, stole an encrypted list of 25 corrupt CIA operatives from the Serbian terrorist and freelance intelligence broker Nikola Kozlo. When Nathan was three, Kozlo then planned on abducting Nathan to force Martin to hand over the list. Nathan had been given to his adoptive parents to protect him. Kozlo used the website to claim Nathan as the missing child and Stephen Price to find him. Dr. Bennett gives Nathan the address of a safe house in Arlington, Virginia, and tells him to trust only Martin and a man named Paul Rasmus. Burton is warned by his superior to end the situation as soon as possible once he learns of Bennett, who is revealed to be a former CIA operative. Arriving at the safe house, the two obtain money, a gun, and a cell phone. Karen tries to call her family, but her call is again intercepted by Burton and the CIA, this time the Serbian terrorist Kozlov also traces the call and listens to their entire conversation. Because of which, they had to run out of there. They drive a BMW however, they miss noticing that they are followed by one of the Serbian terrorists. They are unaware that they are being followed by Kozlov's right-hand man, who abducts Karen. He leaves her bound and gagged with duct tape, but she frees herself. The two take an Amtrak passenger train, using fake IDs provided en route, they confess their feelings and share a kiss. Nathan finds and fights the assailant and throws him out the window. Burton's team finds Kozlo's henchmen and tracks them down. CIA officer Frank Burton meets Nathan and tells him that the data your father stole is with you now and his name could be on that list too. Cooperate with me, I won't let anything happen to you. During the talk, Serbian terrorists and their people suddenly start shooting CIA officer and Nathan with snipers. He can't let this data get leaked. Because his secrets and the names of his companions are in it. Nathan and Karen flee in a car, but Kozlo calls and threatens to kill Karen's parents if Nathan does not hand over the data. Nathan had no other choice, therefore, gets Kozlo to agree to make the transaction at a Pittsburgh Pirates baseball game at their home stadium, PNC Park. Nathan obtains tickets and secures a gun with the intent to kill Kozlo with the help of his friend Gilly. When Kozlo arrives, he tells Nathan how he killed his mother when Nathan was just three years old after she refused to give up Martin's location. Engaging Nathan emotionally, Kozlo grabs the gun from him and demands the list, Nathan bolts, and Kozlo gives a chase. In the stadium, already there were two CIA operatives who was spying on both of them. They too join the chase. Here, for the first time, he receives a call from his father Martin. He persuades him to trust him. He says that I took care of you, even when I was far away. And tells him to trust him and run to the south parking lot. Nathan does the same and immediately comes to the parking area. Here, Nathan's father shoots the Serbian terrorist with a sniper gun. Who dies on spot. Burton and his agents arrive at the scene and Burton asks for the cell phone. 
However, Martin had warned his superior about Burton's corruption. Therefore, the superior officer takes the phone himself, while Burton is taken into custody. Martin calls Nathan again, apologizing for not being the father, he should have been. He says, sorry Nathan. I couldn't become the ideal father, as I was supposed to be, I am top secret agent in CIA, Nathan asks him, to show himself but Martin refuses. However, he assures Nathan, no one will harm him or Karen, and then he disappears. Bennett arrives with Karen, and says she has arranged for Nathan, to live with her until, he decides what to pursue in his life. As the movie ends, Nathan and Karen go on a date. If you like this movie's explanation, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next movie.